Okay guys, hello. Today we are at the part two of the card re review. So remember the new expansion is coming 8th of December and let's see what we have uh, from new cards. First of all, TWAT. Triangle within a triangle. Boost an ally by its provision cost or damage an enemy by its provision cost. So it's basically a Vivian uh, or Becker Mirror. Um, but working a little bit differently. It's a spell, so it's working with Alzor, which is uh, worth noting. Uh, and it's a decent one, right? Because if you play it as a Vivian, sort of, uh, then it's sometimes even better. For, for example, if you, if you play it on the on Roach, it's 10 for 9, which is okay. And Vivian is uh, 3 plus 7, it's the same. <laughs> but this is neutral, and you can, it, you can play it in any deck. And yet again, it's working great with Alzur, so it's okay. It's not a game breaking. It's not like now you will see this card in every uh, deck, but in some maybe in some uh, spell decks that I don't know don't want to uh, run Becker's Mirror, but instead want something more flexible, maybe. Well, I don't expect this to be a meta, but it's a decent card. Ooh, and now something juicy, Cosimo Malaspina. So, wait, I need to change my face. Whoop. Let's just move it around. Cosmino Malaspina, deploy, transform adjacent units into random unit that has cost one provision or more. This is interesting card and it's uh, wor wor worth no wor noting a few, few things. First, if you use it on 13 provision card, it doesn't work. Well, it, nothing will happen. Second, if you use it on a token, nothing happens again. S and same with the leader uh, abilities that spawn the unit that is that's zero provision, nothing will happen. So you want to use it on not on tokens, but on something that is already played. Uh, <sighs> this is definitely an interesting card, and I'm gonna play the hell out of it. It's also a mage, which might matter in I don't know, maybe in some NR mage deck or something like this uh, but it's really uh, hard to judge if it's gonna be that great it's uh, synergized extremely well with cards like uh, Philippa for example or with cards that are poisoned bleed or, or something like this or cards that almost dead or cards with low provision uh, high provision but low power uh, like Vincent Roach uh, I don't know anything that basically plays for a button all Geralt's, for example, uh, and it's hard to say if it's super powerful to play it. I'm starting, uh, just so you know, I did start uh, an Excel, oops, I didn't mean to do it. I did start an Excel to try to analyze what's the power, and what I'm seeing is that basically if you transform something from 10 to 11, then it's probably gonna be good or from 11 top. But at the same time, as you can see, the average power of a unit is not that strong. It's like four, five, four, five. So basically, most of the time, oops, sorry, wrong screen. So most of the time, you want to use it on something below four power to boost it by one or two. So from my first part of my math, 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 on average, you want to use it on cards that are like one, two power, and then you will gain like two, three points from each of them, like three points from each of them. So it's gonna be 11 for nine most of the time, plus there might be a bonus effect on these cards. That's, that's the average, sort of, which is not bad, actually. I think it's pretty powerful. Maybe in some uh, decks that uh, play not many spells, but play a lot of units and often units on that do something on deploy and then they are gone. They, it might be good because, uh, pro, for example, you don't want to use it on the, mm, you don't want to use it on any engines, but it's very good or on cards that are uh, Phoenix cards, I think, because they drop, they are a little bit below the power of the provision and when something damages them or bleed them, for example, we are playing against uh, Bloodsend, uh, monster deck, um, you summon two dwarves, your opponent is bleeding one of it, you put it, and on average you should get like two more points from it then, two, three, if they are not damaged. 
it's very hard to judge but it can high roll which is uh, which which is something that might uh, put it in the meta it's very interesting card when i need to finish my excel and i need to see it work in game okay next one foca so foca looks very bad to me like why would you play this card it has strife veil thrive units played by your opponent trigger this unit's thrive ability i don't know if this means that uh, my thrive doesn't work as well is it like units played by your opponent also trigger this unit's uh, thrive or is it only uh, mine anyway whatever it is it's still bad <laughs> i i do believe because even if it's your, on your side then maybe you can make it uh eight for five but why wouldn't you play Andrega Larva? And that's the problem. Andrega Larva is just better. Uh, it's just doing everything better. It's This one is more safer, but Andrega Larva can give you like 12 points easily for five. Because you have two and you boost both to, I don't know, like six. Yeah, 12 for five. Amazing. That's why Larva is probably one of the best uh, bronze cards in the game. And this is not better. It's not. Also, the five provision slot is sort of uh, taken already and occupied in monster decks. In most of the decks, you play larva and two larvas and two uh, wild hunt riders. And in deathwish decks, you play some deathwish um, stuff like barkest uh, or some eggs or anything, something better. And you don't really have a place for foca. And that's it. You don't have a place. And in Wild Hunt, you have some tech choices like Purify or Movement. There is just not a place in Monster Deck for 5 Provision card that average. That's the problem. Next card. Wiper Witcher Adept. Oh, let's move now here. Whoop. Wiper Witcher Adept. At the end of your turn, boost self by 1 if opponent has more cards in the deck than you. I actually like this card. Maybe it's not super powerful, but when it starts proking, it's hard for your opponent to stop it. What I mean by it, if uh, it's any engine you can lock and uh, and kill, obviously, but also some of the engines you can play around. For example, you have this engine from uh, Skellige that boosts every time you, uh, you have uh, damaged unit. You can play around it by boosting your units. Around this one, if you don't have a deck built to counter it by, I don't know, some heavy milling, heavy uh, thinning, then you cannot do anything. And imagine starting the game using this from Portal. It's a very good start for Nilfgaard because you uh, start with uh, thinning, you start with uh, tempo, you start with uh, engine, two engines on the board and it's gonna proc at least once. Uh, what I one note is I think it's free uh, power, not four. Uh, this is the only thing that I'm not sure of, uh, but I don't know. I don't uh, I don't know which is correct version. Both I think are okay. It, this can easily go to like six, seven, four, four, uh, and I think it's good with portal. Mm, that's it. You you will just see it a lot with portal uh, at least day one, and it's interesting also. I I, I like this card. It's not OP. Mm, don't like don't tell me it's OP because uh, what if you play against mirror or if you play every hype heavy heavy hyper thin deck or anything deck it might screw you and I don't think you will play like viper witcher or coated weapons just to proc this because you don't want to fill your cards with garbage uh, like viper witcher just to make one engine maybe work so I don't think this will this you will play like whole package but viper witcher adept I like Okay, uh, Coated Weapon, I don't think we talked about last time. Uh, damage an enemy, uh, enemy unit by 5, banish it and spawn a copy of it on the top of opponent's stack. This is interesting card that I think it's bad, but it might see play. So I don't, it's basically sometimes even uh, Nilfgaard had to put uh, ta Azur Thunder, even though they have uh, mm, Assassination and Joust, because sometimes you just wanted... Uh, to always have five point removal and that's it also it's a tactic it's another cheap tactic which is great for enslave because uh because you have limited amount of tactics in uh, in the game in the deck list uh, in the deck builder you sometimes have to play more expensive now 
just to make, for example, n slave six. And with this, we might actually have viable n slave seven deck, which I was fan of. And maybe I didn't do a math yet, but maybe it will be possible to make even n slave eight. But I, but I think not yet. But maybe. <laughs> Don't play it, but it's gonna be fun. But anyway, from the ability perspective, I'm so confused. I I think I feel like it's bad because it's just five for five, and the thing is, you want to use it on a crap, and crap you usually don't want to remove, right? Because you want to, your opponent to have bad mulligan next turn, so you don't want to use it on a, any like super powerful engine. Uh, because they will just play it again next turn. But may in the round three, though, it's very good then, because it just screws the, I don't know, maybe some tactic of uh, feeling. But it's an interesting card. I would rate it, like, okay out of ten. <laughs> I don't know. I It has potential, but it's not, like, extremely powerful. It's interesting, though. And it's a tactic. That's a very important part. Now Sir Pumpkin, which is Griffin Witcher Adept. Shield, order transform an allied Witcher into a base copy of Griffin Witcher Adept. So everyone on the Twitter and, I don't know, Reddit, were like, wow, that's an amazing engine. Or like, wow, a Terral for uh, Northern Realm. But, and also like, oh, Regner, King Regner, finally f finding a lot of value. But I don't know. I don't think so, because... First, you transform an allied Witcher, so you need to play Witchers. We don't know what Witchers we have yet, but from what we know is available, the best target for this are Witcher Trio, like Vesemi Lambert and uh, the third one that I forgot now. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, and then you get two points per turn and a shield, which is nice for Regner, but Witchers you want to play in round one. Regner you want to play in round two free so the, this is anti-synergy uh, i don't see it i really don't see it we this card sort of tells me that we're gonna see some more witchers for uh nr and maybe no more neutral witchers at the moment i think this card is just bad it's just four for four i i don't see the hype transforming ally witcher at the moment is bad there are no Witcher that you want to transform. Do you want to transform this into the base Witcher? No, you don't. <laughs> so basically it's only Witcher 3 at the moment. Then that's it. This is the only Witcher that you want to transform into Griffin Witcher Adept. And it's slow and it's anti-synergy because one you want to play in round one, second you want to play in round three. I don't get it, but maybe you will see more cards that will support it. Okay, next card. Cat Witcher Saboteur. Saboteur? Saboteur? Move an enemy unit uh, to the left most. Oh, I, I think we talked about it, but we can quickly go through it. Yeah, I think that we... No, yeah, yeah, we did talk about it. Sorry. Uh, Cat Witcher. At the end of your turn, move self to the other row and damage a random enemy unit on the opposite row by one. Adrenaline, damage it by two instead. This I really, really like. Mm, this has a great synergy with uh, all of the, all of the um, movement synergy. And also, it's a nice engine. You cannot counter it by moving, you have to remove it, and it instantly it's 5 for 5, and if you play it later, it's uh, 6 for 5 interest instantly, and it's working like this, that you can play it in the like as the first card, and it will tick by 1, and later it will tick by 2. So it's basically a wild boar of the sea, but for 5 provision, it's, it's great. I do believe that in any harmony deck, it's instant pick because of a, a different attack, and it's cheap. So you get a decent engine, with new tag uh, that you can just leave and it's gonna proc. So even if like a zero movement synergy, I do believe you put it in any harmony deck just for attack and just because it's an engine. But in the movement deck, like imagine you play the, mm, the sentry that you play in the range and it will boost this card every turn by one. So you leave it unanswered once and well, it's, uh, it's gonna screw you. And also then it, go it will just ping by two. Also, so one, one problem, problem of Dryad Matron that jumps to the most right uh, side of the board uh, and then it boosts uh, the unit uh, on the left by one doesn't proc when you pass. This is very very problematic uh, engine 
um, problem, I don't know how to call it, uh, for movement uh, Scoia'tael, because sometimes you're, you want to pass, your opponent will play a card, and you want your engines to still proc to make it awkward for your opponent, and you generate more points even if you already passed. Ma Matron used to just jump to the last side, and that's it, it won't proc. Now, if you will have Catwitcher on the uh, top row, it will jump to the bottom row, and your Matron will proc. So it will be another uh, another important thing to remember uh, if you are playing against it or with it, that you might get this one additional point from Matron, which might be relevant, but in some cases it will be relevant. Uh, because, again, uh, in Gwent, everything resolves from top left to bottom right, so this first will jump and then Matron will... Uh, will jump, so it will boost its shadow. So this is like a very small detail, but it might be relevant. I really like this card. I think it's it's five stars, really. I, lo I love it. Uh, we don't have anything for Skelliganu. And for Syndicate, we got Failed Experiment. Oof, this is, this is creepy. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. Uh, failed Experiment. At the end of your turn, lose one coin. If you have no coins, damage self by one instead. While poisoned, disable this ability. So this is... This is a weird card. I really cannot judge it. Uh, first of all, uh, it's 8 for 5, right? It's instantly 8 of 4 5 because uh, I don't know if you have any poison on or order apart from Maral. So you play it and it will take your coin or damage it uh, by self. And then next turn you have to uh, poison it and it stops. Problem, you will have a poison on a very tall unit. So it's a very good target for poison from your opponent. But... I have I see another synergy with Becker Mirror. So we basically drop it early and it just go down and then you use Becker Mirror for amazing eight points. So basically it will like boost by eight and then uh, like reset to eight and then boost by eight. Which is cool. <laughs> but it's not really great game breaking, but I'm gonna play it for sure. Also you can play it in a Hyperfins uh, Syndicate with uh, Trees and uh, Yennefer, I did try it and you have Greater Brother for it, but this is maybe a, like a extra option, maybe. Also it's synergized with Heal and we have some good Heal uh, cards for Syndicate, so maybe. Also it's, if you play it as a last card it's 8 for 5, 8 for 5 is not bad. As a last card. That's a nice short round finisher. So, pff, it's better than you if you drop like four. So, maybe it's not a bad card. It's not game breaking again, but it's a decent card. Uh, okay, it's, it's, uh, it's okay. Uh, anyway, that's it for today from this page. However, we have another uh, reveal. So, sorry, we, ha we have one more card uh, revealed today on the stream, so it's not yet updated on the uh, website. And it's making a bob. Move an enemy unit to the other row and give it bleeding 4. If it's the only unit on that row, damage it by 4 instead. Uh, and it's a Scoia'tael card. So, when I first look at it, it's underwhelming, right? I'm not a big fan of it. It looks like 4 for 4. And also, most of the time, it will be, be bleeding, so it's a very slow 4-4-4. Four, 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 four. But then I started to think. I started to look at this with some of my um, teammates. I've seen some chatting on the uh, um, Gwent, on, on the Team Bandit Gun Discord. And we got to conclusion that it's a bad card that actually might see play, basically. That's what I'm thinking about this card. Uh, why? Because first it has some synergy with movement, second it's good with Gord, because sometimes you just want to play uh, 4 provision spells and you have option of tempering and dryad cares, basically, that's it. And sometimes you don't want to play 4 of those, so maybe you will take in uh, making a bomb instead. Also, maybe there will be some more synergy with bombs, because well, witchers are known to... Known to play with bombs, so maybe there will be card like play bomb from your deck, or maybe create a bomb. I expect something like this, to see a card that's right, that basically says deploy, create a bomb. So maybe this will be nice addition there, because sometimes you will, would like to play this instead of other choices. So maybe, maybe, 
I, I still think it's a bad card, but it might see some niche, unique play or like a, as a tech choice. So it, it, it's even possible that you won't see this card for a year and then someone will, will see that this card works in one particular scenario and you will see it. But I, I still think this is just bad. It's super slow for points. Okay, thank you very much for um, this part and we'll see you, I will see you in part three.